Hey guys, uh, it's another episode of What Are We Drinking? Uh, with me as always is Andrew Isaacson, Advanced Sommelier. And uh, we're going to bring on a special guest tonight, uh, Kristen Clages. Uh I think she's Kristen Clages, but that's probably not really her name. But we're going to bring her on anyway. Uh, she works here at Salumi Tops and Wine Bar in Massapequa, and she's going to join us to bring in, uh, you know, another perspective. Um, come on over, Kristen. Perspective on what? On what we're drinking. Oh, okay. Right? Because we have, you've got your opinion as an advanced som, I have my opinion as a restaurateur, mm -hmm. but we can get Kristen's opinion as a waitress, bartender, and... Person. Just, person. A person. Unlike that's, you and me. Yeah, that's the thing about this podcast. We need more people on it. People. We don't have people. We just have you and me. Uh, what are we? Yeah. yeah, well, we've been told that the uh, podcasts that we've done so far are Shitty. incredibly boring. Terrible. <laughs> just like, because we're not said that? people. We're wine idiots. Yeah, it's, nobody said that exactly, but they were like, yeah, I just zoned out so after like nice. five minutes and I couldn't follow They're being it. nice about it. Couldn't keep watching. And, you know. <clears throat> But, you know, that's because we talk about wine stuff. For seven years straight, we've been talking pretty much the exact same way about wine. So right. we need a person to intervene and right. average person. bring us down to yeah. the everyday person. Yeah. Not everyday. an advanced wine sommelier yeah. or the right. owner of a wine bar. Right, yeah, exactly. right. Yes. I guess that's a good We want to get a more, more of a common perspective. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Plebeian. Uh, right. of <laughs> Plebeian? Okay. Yeah. Well, that makes us patricians then. Does if, it? If we're not plebeians. Well, in Roman society, there were the patricians and the plebeians. Mm. The patricians were the, you know, the I think this is the classes. stuff that is boring, too. Oh, it's all boring. It's <laughs> the all whole boring. thing is going to be boring and terrible. Yeah. But well, uh, that, at least we'll be drinking during it. Yeah. So. This, the part where we talked about the Civil War and World War II and all that. I thought that, that was fantastic. Right, I don't that, know everybody hated that. Also, too all dry. All thousands of our viewers were like, no, that was too dry. Yeah. Um, I thought we were being slightly controversial and politically incorrect. I don't know. I nope. it was fine. Not, Not enough. Boring Not enough. history stuff. Boring history. So, well, let's see what we can do this time. Uh, so, my it's first your fault question. since you know all the facts. <laughs> Which facts? You were giving all the facts, so it was boring because it was all factual. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm sorry for being well informed. I apologize. You can't, uh, you can't help it. Yeah. You can't help it. <clears throat> my question to you, though, Andrew, oh. is. Who's calling it's a right good, now? I cannot answer that. Right. So uh, we're sitting here inside of a basically shut down wine, salumi, and tapas bar. About five days into the Corona apocalypse. That's right. That's where we're at. Corona apocalypse. We're shut down. Um, we are not making any money. Practically, uh, a few of the staff members are hanging on, trying to make a couple of bucks to live on. We're not making no money. I mean, that phone call was hopefully in order. And well, right. We that, are adapting. I think we we've gotten done. busier. Like, we're mm -hmm. a lot busier yesterday than we were Wednesday, and so, and so on and so, so forth. forth. Like, today was even busier, I heard. Right. What's lunch. going on is it's all takeout making, business. Making boards over there. Yes. We're not allowed to see we're people adapting. in the restaurant, takeout and delivery only. Uh, but we're trying to get out there on social media, like this, for instance, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, let people know that we are going to serve, you know, food, wine, everything to go, so you can have your beautiful, you know, sommelier selected wines, wine bar food, beautiful charcuterie, cured meats and cheeses. You can have all mm -hmm. that at home. And in the meantime, we'll continue our normal shenanigans as much as possible. Right. And really the reason that I wanted to do this is because of this whole lockdown thing, I wanted to try to create a sense of like, well, you can still feel like you're hanging out at you're the still wine at the bar. bar. You're digitally you know? at the bar. Yeah, you're digitally at the and wine you can, bar you with both, us. I mean, theoretically... They can come in, they can buy a bottle of wine, they can go home and they can watch the podcast as if they were here the whole time. Exactly. Yeah, right? You can drink at home while watching the podcast. In their house the on their couch. I mean, who doesn't want to get margaritas literally delivered to their house? I mean, that sounds like a great <laughs> deal to me. Like, I hope yeah. that after this is all over, we're still over, allowed to deliver margaritas. Exactly. To Let's put, push that narrative yes. forward. Push the wine point. delivery, wine to go from restaurants, it can continue forever. We Let's can't go backwards. Going. Nope. You know, if we can just get the state of New York to allow us to have margaritas to go, yeah. that would be the silver lining in this whole thing. It's all worth I it. I agree. Listen, uh, we were talking before, it's crazy how we would, we were like punishable by yeah. major fines and 
Essentially death. Essentially death. punishable you by can't death. Bring wine yeah, home. Nice. If you're a restaurant, you can't sell anything to go. And, you know, given these extraordinary circumstances, that just changed overnight. It's like, well, how was it a week ago it was completely illegal and now it's essential? Mm. It's like, doesn't that make the law seem a little silly if hey, hey, it could hey. just be lifted so ridiculously easy? Don't criticize the state. You're going to get us in trouble. <laughs> You're going to get us all hung up by our, our bootstraps. Right, right. No. Uh, Strung up by our necks. Whatever it is. Yeah. I don't know. Just to me, it sounds a little... No. It's like, is that was that law even in there for the right reason? If it Now it's an essential... I yep. think we should just appreciate what we have while we have it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, sure. like you were saying, a silver lining. I think that line. everybody's so panicked right now and everybody's just like so upset and wherever we can find like joy and happiness. Some normalcy, some happiness. Yeah. Just yeah. Take advantage. Well, so let's do that. Yeah. My question is this though. Andrew, what are we drinking? All right. So I had this thought earlier. Usually I try to decide on the spot, but I've actually had this plan to drink this bottle for a long time. But you told me it was a dream. It was a dream. It can be. Or it was dream. like when I was in that dream okay. state because I was thinking I knew we had a podcast coming tonight. <laughs> uh, so, um, yes, I took it off the list a while ago because we were down to one bottle. I don't like to have one bottle on the list because if we, if I print a new list, I print like every month and we sell it like the first night, let's say, I have a bottle on the list that we don't have for like a whole month. So I try to avoid that. Uh, and I figure we'll just drink that last bottle. So, Josh, I am going to suggest that we drink a bottle of Jean Chartron's Merceau that we have had for many years just sitting, just just rotting in the fridge. Let's, I think it'll be great. So he's talking about Merceau. I think it was a 2014. I have no idea what that is. It's in there, it's, JP. It's, it's in liquid there. I saw gold. Okay. Liquid. Yeah. It's liquid gold. Oh, wait. Is it gold in color? Sure. Yes. It probably will be pretty gold at this point, yeah. I yeah. may have had something similar to this one. Well, if you've had any Chardonnay ever, you've had something similar. Oh, that's right. uh, have I ever maybe had like a good Burgundy on a class that we know the staff? I think I probably have, so it's possible. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, but this is, yeah, we should be good. This is a high-end Burgundy uh, white wine, and all white wine from yeah, Burgundy, yeah. for the most part, is Chardonnay. Uh, this is this is what, you know, this is the benchmark of Chardonnay. This mm -hmm. is the real deal. A lot of people say that uh, Burgundy Chardonnay at its best is, you know, the greatest white wine in the world. The greatest dry white wine in the world. Right. A subjective statement, of course, but yeah, and it's a 2014, just as it were. This is the Jean Chartron Merceau. A Merceau is a village in Burgundy. A high, highly regarded village for Chardonnay in particular. Uh, JP, I have a wine key if you don't. So yeah, that should be interesting. We, we actually, when we first got this, well, we got one order of this wine ever here, I think like four years ago. The wine was very young at the time, three or four years ago. And we had it then, we liked it. It'll be really interesting to see how this held up. Yeah, I bet it's, great. Yeah. It's Merceau. Yeah. Hey, Kristen, uh, if you're not comfortable, do you want to pull up a, a stool? I'm or? good, yeah. You good standing? All right, cool. So yeah, Kristen is uh, Kristen is a waitress slash bartender here at uh, Slimmy. She's only been with us a short time, but we've known Kristen for years. Yes. Um, Most and, uh, of the tenure of Slimmy. Really. I think. I mean, you and I are probably going to love it because we're going to say it's Merceau, it's Merceau, it's mm -hmm. amazing, mm -hmm. it's liquid gold. But it'd be interesting <laughs> to find out what she thinks. You know, what yeah. what a real person yeah. actually thinks. She'll go, I don't know, it's Chardonnay. I guess. <laughs> well, let's let's say let's refrain from because yeah. I'm a big believer in you to make the wine taste better. You frame the wine. You explain mm -hmm. what to look for, mm -hmm. and then when you find it in the glass, you go, Oh yeah, that's that's exactly what the sommelier said, or the waitress said, or the waiter said. That must be great. Uh, so let's refrain from adding any more descriptors of this wine other than the fact that it's Chardonnay. Okay, so you're not going to you're not going to frame it. I'm not going to frame it. Yeah. I think so, that's right. a good. It, uh, it does make people enjoy it more just through like power of suggestion when you frame the wine yeah. properly. But let's do it without. Let's do it naked. Frameless. Frameless wine. Okay. Good. I was worried if it was corked. Imagine it was corked. Yeah, that's, that'd be a shame. We could always open up another Sounds bottle good. of wine. We, well, yeah, we'd have to respond in real time to the real that's right. to a real situation. That's right. Okay. <laughs> Oops. 
Oh, he's doing the tasting ritual. Okay. I'm just yep, the ritual. We don't really need to do the tasting ritual because the bottle's open and it is what it is. So it's good to go. JP, for you, uh, sir. Sure, thank you. All right. Forgot to pour the host, but let's make sure the audience. I told him not to do the tasting ritual. The ritual. Yeah, what, what do we need it for? Oh, oh sorry. No, sorry. Sorry. There you go. All right, so Merceau. 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 Cheers. Sure. Or, or Cheers. Well, we're not supposed to well, drink. Well, we didn't drink oh. from it yet. Corona. Okay. None of us drank okay. from it yet. Oh, so we have the Corona Cheers. They're clean glasses. They're clean glasses. I think they're the one. Corona Cheers is the bottom. Is that the yeah. equivalent of the elbow? Yeah, I think it's right. the equivalent yeah. of the elbow. Yeah, the wine glass. The wine glass. Cheers, everybody. Yeah. But Cheers. we didn't drink from it yet, so you could theoretically. Okay. Mm. All right, I know you're dying to give notes. I'm not going to hold off, right? I'm not gonna notes. Kristen's going to take this one. I think we should, as Kristen talks about it, thinks about it, we can start to provide some, like, yeah, this is what it costs, this is what it looks like, you know? Mm -hmm. So it smells like, on the nose, Yeah. it smells like apple type. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it tastes like very crisp and clean. Um, it's easy to drink. Definitely. Let me try it again. Oh, right. So I want to hear more about the nose. I got apple. Okay. Okay. No, no, like fresh apple, like green apple. Sure. Natural. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. What else? Could it be a mix of fresh apple and? Maybe like pear. Ah, yeah. sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, this is so some interesting fruit on here. Uh, I feel like the finish is strong, right? It lingers a while? Yeah, it lingers. That's mm. what the average person would say. Yeah. Yeah, you never hear that. They would never say it's strong finish. They'll say it's long. They'll say it's long. They'll say it's, long. Yeah. it's a long one. Mm. Yeah. Okay. It's got like a little bit of like tart right. to it. Yes, it does, exactly. As maybe as opposed to a lot of California Chardonnay in this mm -hmm. style, right? Which is something that I think sets it apart and gives it a, an energy. It's got that, yeah, the tension. Tension, yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah, so we always say like acidity gives the wine a, a tension, it, especially white. It gives this fabric of the wine. It's not just this flabby, loose thing draping all over the place. It's got an energy to it. Mm -hmm. Verve. So, but the most, all right, so, yeah, you get some apple, some green apple. I get a little few notes of, like, fresh apple as well as maybe a little baked apple or a little golden yeah, yeah. delicious or something like that. A little fuller. Mm -hmm. um, anything else? Like It has, like, but it also has that, like, not bite, but, like, that, like I guess acidity, like you were saying. Oh, yeah, on yeah. the palate. I'm yeah. just talking about the nose, though. On the nose. Any other little notes there? Like, there a little cinnamon or nutmeg, hazelnut? I feel like your question Maybe answers the question. Yeah, hazelnut is, Maybe is hazelnut. all right, cool. Yeah. It's one of those things where like, I wouldn't be able to pull that word out like sure. just as a regular person, but then once you like tell me, right. I like totally like notice right. it. Like, right. And that's the game, right? I mean, anyone who's a good taster, any sommelier, they're not pulling out of nowhere. They just know which boxes to check off. They have the the list or the grid, as we call it, just ingrained in your brain, and you just quickly check down the boxes. It's like, all right, is there something like nutty here? Yes, right. there is. And then you go to the next thing, and then you go to the next thing, and the next thing. You know, it's right. Well, I've heard that you know many times before, like a lot of like French whites that are heavily oaked, which more so typically is. You're going to expect a little toasted hazelnut. I think that's an amazing call. Right. So I'm looking for it. Yeah. But you're, you're just naturally looking for it. Like, so we've really been suggested in a similar way as you, you know, like, but once you, you know, so you read about it and you go, let me see, is there hazelnut? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there is, right? Yeah. It's got to be the, the, the most interesting call in this one. I mean, certainly the baked apple, yeah. pear, quince, all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And then the hazelnut, I think it's okay. a tremendous call. Cool. Cool. But uh, it's probably hard to tell with all this talking and analyzing and everything, but do you like it? I do. I do like it. Yeah. All right. 
Yeah, the, the, do you think the analyzing takes away like some enjoyment of it? It can, you know, and at the same unless time, you like to it. unless you like to analyze, right. which I think a lot of people that are this far into wine, they like to be analytical. I think like as just like a regular person, um, it's like fun to do it for like a little bit. But <laughs> maybe gets, we but not like, for hours. No, like maybe we drink it like <laughs> every night. For other, like just to enjoy wine in general, like not trying to be like so critical, right. critical thinking about right. it, more just like viewing wine as just like a fun relaxed experience. That tastes something like that tastes good. Detective work or something. Yeah. Mm. Well, certainly something like blind tasting is kind of like detective work here. Right. I, I heard a good uh, analogy from one of the MSs, Chuck Fruit, and he's like, think of it as like a diagnosis. Like you're, if you're blind tasting, right. wine, you go through the symptoms. Oh, it has this. It, it has this acidity. It has these fruits. You go through everything first. You try not to make the call halfway through. At the right. end, you're like, this is what it must be. Right. And then you make also, the diagnosis. Like, remember, like for someone like me who's never like heard of this name of kind of wine and sort of it's kind of like wine tasting for me right you're not really sure what yeah like it's coming a, at you. right yeah well uh but i think I'm you know you don't really know a wine like all of this like just like oh it's this and that the way you really know a wine is when you sit down by yourself and you drink a bottle of it or or, or together but you both do a bottle of it right. yeah or if you eat it with food right oh yeah food well both right <clears throat> yeah you know you as the wine buyer, Josh has done it, and he's with me all the time. Sometimes you guys are. You see, we, we the reps come in with like eight wines, and they're there for an hour. And you talk, you're talking about whatever pricing, and you're tasting these wines quickly. You get about this much wine in the glass, and you have to, have to make a decision so quickly: should I buy this wine for what it's worth? And you can get a good reading on the wine. Yeah. But ev just about every wine that we ever buy, we I think we take a bottle of it. And we do exactly what we're doing right now. Pretty soon after we get it, and that's, that's like right. that's the final call. When you sit with it and you enjoy it, you you know if you really enjoyed it or not. The cocktail be made. We got those takeout very, orders. These are out. very good sounds. Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. Love to hear cocktails being made. Yeah. Means that means that it's going to be a little bit of money coming in to pay people's paychecks. Yes. 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 Which would be nice. that would be nice. That would be very yeah. nice. Yeah. Everyone likes that. People when they, like money. When they get some kind of money at the end of the week. Yeah. When you have a job, I feel like that's the goal, right? <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's a big part of it. Yeah. I mean, how long can this really continue without <laughs> people getting paid at all? You know? I, mean, uh, I don't know. There's so many people who are just aren't getting paid at all. Oh, I know, right. So many, well, I mean, look at the restaurant suppliers. They're flipping out. Everybody just flipping. buys the food and all that, and, you know, and the paper goes and everything else to the restaurant. They're flipping out. Uh, Oh, another cocktail happening. Don't don't be, don't worry about us. We're not important here. I don't think you guys is. are doing the, the real work. You're yeah. making the money to keep this place going. Well, yeah. Yeah. at least to keep yourselves alive, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. I just think that it's good that we're able to like still bring people some comfort. Like they love Salumi, like the regulars come in and they're mm -hmm. like, oh like Everything's so uncertain right now, but at least we can still get our board, we can still get our Italian mm -hmm. board, we can still get our wine, and yeah. I think that's like helping people like yeah. at a time like this, honestly. Yeah, some of the, at least some of the food that you're used to, like the right, the Spanish board, yeah. and you know, the pecorino tartufo cheese, and all this, like at least everything hasn't been taken from you. Exactly. At least you have that this to cling some to. Yeah. Shred of reality. <laughs> you can so, still yeah. have your favorite restaurant foods, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, we what did we read? Uh, and find one. Not, and you can get good wine. We read, yes, essential things are going to continue to stay open. Uh, and we read what that is. What we're doing here is actually requirement. Like we're required to stay. Then we read that as well. You know, like since we can provide food to the community, it's kind of our role to continue to do so. Yeah. Yeah, we're a food outlet, yeah. so we have to keep working. I mean, and, and we really do because there's a good amount of food here in stock, especially because we have so much charcuterie and cheese. And it stays, uh, we, we have large amounts, and we have the cheese shop next door, so um, yeah, we have large amounts of charcuterie and cheese. And, um, you know, if we just kept that for our side for the staff, I think, we'd essentially be hoarding at that point. Right, right. So we do have to keep letting it out to the public. Yeah. And as long as, like, you know, we're still doing the right thing and doing our part to help the community, I think it's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Where do you think the drinks comes into that? Like, it's not clear if providing alcohol is, it seems obviously not essential, or it seems obviously essential, depending on the person, I think. But I feel like the reality is somewhere in the middle. I think, Go ahead. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say, like, I feel like it's tough because, like, drinking lowers the immunity and the pandemic and everything like that. But then you told me something interesting yesterday. Yes. I saw a study that said excessive drinking lowers your immunity. But like a lot of other health benefits, one to two drinks a day actually gave you better immunity and a lot of other health benefits. People that drink zero actually have worse immunity and worse other health things than people that drink one to two. So if you drink one to two, you're perfect. If you drink less, it's worse. If you drink more, it's worse. So in that sense, we're doing more good. A health benefit. Yeah, but I think there's a mental health aspect of it too. Sure. And again, just the whole thing. We're not taking, the Pecorino's available. Not everything has been taken away from you. If you want a good bar made cocktail, yep. that's available. If you want a nice bottle of wine, you can come here, you can go to like a store, whatever. Ooh, but it order. exists. Orders yeah. are coming in. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thanks everybody. This I don't know great. if we've been drinking one to two a night though, of course. Oh we've no, we never certainly have. Certainly been exceeding that limit, um, understandably so, I believe. But I think well, a lot of people are probably are. Yeah. There's nothing else to do. Well right now we're gonna exceed the two drink limit. Yeah, but we had two drinks be before the podcast. We had two drinks before. We already exceeded. You can't really blame the podcast. We had two drinks before the podcast well, that, started. That's you guys. Right. The rest yeah. of us are. Well, we had to record all these commercials for a yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. For about wine. And I well, as a regular person who is keeping it to one or two because they don't have to do a podcast, I think it's great that when we still open for business, I think everybody should take advantage of our $8 cocktails. We're pushing forward. Yeah. 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 But, and I'll throw this out there, too. It's like you can say, like, oh, well, wine is an essential food, is. Uh, this has calories in it, too. You know what I mean? This will keep you going to some extent. It's gonna it has calories. It's energy, it's fuel for people to live on. Right. So right. You know. There's a reason why people drink alcohol. Much like if you're having a piece of bread right now, that's not wildly different. Right. There's there's it's calories in this. Yeah. You know, every glass of that, uh, every bottle of wine, this bottle of wine probably has five hundred calories. Right. Six hundred probably. That's it? It's, yeah. Well, wow, it's, it's I really dry. would have thought that it would have a lot more. No. There's a lot of misconception about sugar in wine. I yeah. mean, this there in, in Europe, uh, a lot of the dry wines, this would be considered a dry wine, which it is. Uh, there are actually legal limits to how much sugar can be in the wine, residual sugar. The sugar has been fermented to alcohol. This, it, there's no sugar in here. Uh, so the calories are lower than you think. Um, you know what? Sancerre, for example, can have like, a, it can only have a couple grams a bottle. At the maximum. So you're talking per glass less than a gram of sugar. Sure. I mean, that's that's right. pretty low in calories. The only really. calories in it to speak of are the alcohol. alcohol. Yeah. Wine is fermented dry. Oh. Uh, so so yeah. lower than we than a lot of people I think get the perception for. Now there are some wines that are sweet and have sugar in them, that's a different story, but these European dry wines are lower in calories than I think people think. Okay. So look, let's go ahead and wrap it up. Okay. I'm gonna ask you guys. First of all, I'm gonna ask uh, Andrew. Yeah. What's your overall? Let's get into. The, we have to get into the technical stuff a little bit. Sorry, guys. What's your People overall? People that say this probably run to it. Yeah. What's your overall assessment of this wine? When to drink? And and I will uh, go ahead and go give back Kristen the last 